You are, here I am, here we are, we are together again. <laughs> Praise God, bless you guys. Uh, thank you guys for joining this morning. Hey, listen, I pray that uh, this walk and this God kind of love really encourage you, cause you to believe all things as we were talking yesterday about, and not only that, but endure for all things and causes all things to happen in your life. This kind of love never fails. And even though we go through some tough situations in life, sicknesses and diseases and you know, betrayals and, you know, problems in, in families and in, with our friends and bosses and jobs and the whole world, you know, is just set full of stuff that we have to deal with every day. But we come out victorious because this kind of love that we walk in, it never fails. All right. Today, we're going to look at this, uh, the next part of this. You know, when you walk, when you talk about faith, you got to talk about hope because Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is now, hope is futuristic. And so what we're doing is we're taking the things that we're speaking about right now to change our future. This is what faith is all about, okay? And he says here in, in verse seven also, he says, hope, hope if all things, the God kind of love, hope if all things. In other words, the God kind of love prophetically knows that things are gonna happen it speaks all things, believes in all things, futuristic, inv invest in future. It's like wanting to be a prosperous person, but you don't want to. You don't want to do the systematic things that God say do to make your life prosperous. So guess what? You're not walking by faith, and you're forfeiting your hope for a better future. All right. But when it comes down to you and I living by hope, many people. And, and, and please don't, again, quote, 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 don't take this as I'm condemning you. I'm simply trying to bring you uh, hidden truths that have been hidden from your life about things. But when you do certain things in sorrow or you get to the place where you get into unbelief, you're simply, you're simply getting into a place where you don't really believe that Jesus is resurrected because if I believe that Jesus is resurrected and he's my Lord, then I know all things are going to change because my Lord is always for me. All right. And we're going to look at we're going to look at this little story here. This is something that everybody hops on during resurrection time, uh, you know, and we use these scriptures and we but we should. That's what we live by the scriptures. But the understanding and the meanings of these things vary from situation to situation as we live in life, because. God's word is so deep that you can't find the bottom of it, okay? And so we, we look at this. This is in chapter 24 of the book of Luke. And it says that upon the first day of the week, early, very early in the morning, they came to the sepulcher bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found a stone rolled away uh, from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord. And, uh, and it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereby, Thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, and as they, and as they were afraid and bowed down, bowed faces to the earth, and they said to them, and they said to them, Why seek you the living among the dead? In other words, these these people were, they came there. These ladies, they came there, sorrowful. Because it says they were bringing spices because they believed that Jesus was dead. They didn't come to the tombs to rejoice to see the tomb open as he had already told them. They, no, no, hold on now, hold on now. I know where you're going, hold on. See, he had already told them that after three days he was gonna be resurrected. That was the word of God, okay? But they didn't believe the word of God, all right? Because they wouldn't have come there with spices and things to put on his dead body. They wouldn't have been seeking him, okay, the way they were seeking him. And the angel asked them the question, why are you seeking the living among the dead? Okay? See, when it comes down to what we're talking about here today, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, when it comes down to this right here, hoping all things, okay, you have to know that uh, I, I believe that God's going to change things because of his promises, as Peter said. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness uh, through the promises, these special, wonderful promises from God that gives us hope for tomorrow, 
helps us to know that things are going to change. My bank account might be low today, but guess what? I'm believing that by the end of the season of my faith, it's going to be risen so high that it never gets low again. Or I believe that my body says, I don't want these wars against, against uh, the Word of God in my mind. Because again, and this is something spectacular, people will get this, a miracle working thing in your mind, that if I would not fight against what God has promised, I can have what God promised. But if I fight against it, okay, if I reason it out, okay, and these ladies said they had seen the Lord die, but they didn't believe what his word said, see? And sometimes, again, people don't believe what his word says, and we think that the Lord is not going to do what he said he's going to do in our life, and so we don't have any hope for change. See, you, you live in a world that teaches you not to have any hope. Much of the problems that we have with all of the, the crimes and things that go on, it goes on because there are people, individuals, that don't have any hope for the future. And so guess what? Because they don't have any hope, guess what? They do what they think is going to pacify the moment, you know? And that's not the way you and I to live. You and I ought to live by knowing that every promise of God, God is not a man that he should lie, that every promise of God, whatever God has spoken, whatever God has revealed to you, whatever God has shown you in a dream as he showed Joseph, whatever God has spoken to you as he spoke to speak to, to Jacob, whatever God says to you that comes out of the mouth of God, let me tell you something, God's going to watch over and bring it to pass. It's going to happen like that. And that's what gives us the hope. You know, and speaking of Jacob, when Jacob, you know, uh, placed the, the offering on the, on the stone that time and gave it to the Lord and, so, you know, and made this vow to God to give him 10% and do this and do that. And the Lord told him, he says, I'll be with you and whatever. When it got, came to that time for Jacob, he had gone through all of his strength with Laban. He'd gotten to the end, as you say, to the end of my rope. <laughs> He'd gotten to the end of everything with Laban. And God told him, he says, pack up, it's time to go home. What did Jacob do? Jacob came to, to the Lord and he said, you know, you're the Lord who told me you would do this. And you're the Lord who told me you'd do this. And what did God do? God stood with his word that he promised him. Because Jacob brought God's word back to him. And this is what you have to do when you want things to be changed and you want things out there. You want a better future. You want a better marriage. You want a better, your kids to be better. You want everything to be changed. And guess what? You have to maintain your hope. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. All right? So faith is now. And I'm calling it now. All right? And I'm calling it now so that my physical future will be changed. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you here tomorrow morning on Daily Bread.